seven in the Cardinal uniform. A crowd still coming in. Looks like we're going to have a sellout crowd on this Sunday afternoon. A sea of red here at the stadium. And Rick Horton, always great to see the kids getting out at the bases with the players uh, for the opening ceremony. Well, you know that's something they'll remember the rest of their lives, getting a chance to be on the field here at Bush Stadium. And I think Mark DeRosa is going to remember this day. Your first day with a new ball club is something that's special to you. And he will be in left field for the Cardinals this afternoon. And let's take a look at the starting lineup for the Minnesota Twins of Ron Gardenhire. Watch out for those three lefties in the middle of the lineup. Maurer, Morno, and Kubo are very good hitters, especially Maurer. His batting average, Jay, at 394. And Joel Pinero with his sinker will try to neutralize those left handers by keeping the ball away from them. There's a look at Ron Gardenhire in his eighth season with the Minnesota Twins. Joel Pinero, his 15th start. Despite that record, he has. Had a very solid season up to now at sinking fast fastballs, what he relies on. And how good was he against the Mets? A two hitter in that game, and he had the pitch count down. Cardinals used six relievers here yesterday, so they want as many innings as possible out of Pinero as we look at the Cardinals defense. From left to right, DeRosa and Keel Ludwig in the outfield. Both Greens get the start here this afternoon on the left side. Jason LaRue is catching because Yadier Molina, a little banged up, has a little thigh bruise from a collision yesterday. And the veteran, Mark DeRosa, game one as a Cardinal. Denard Spann will lead it off, batting 282. Spann, a first round pick a few years ago, has great speed. Recently came off the DL after battling an inner ear infection. Pinheiro is ready. And the first pitch in for a strike. Brian Gorman is the plate umpire this afternoon. Jerry Davis at first. Todd Tichenor at second. And Mike Everett at third. A little low. Span is 25 years old from Tampa, Florida. He was the Twins most outstanding rookie award winner last season. 0 for 9 in this series. Out to shortstop. Tyler Green's throw is way high, but he wouldn't have him anyway. He broke the wrong way on that ball, Rick, but uh, Span can really fly. Well, it looked like he thought the ball was going up the middle. He takes off to his left, and the ball is hit to his right. First step the wrong direction, which forces him to throw off balance after juggling it. And really, that's a 6 3. And uh, they're going to call that an error as they should. Tyler Green just did not read that ball well off the bat. It could have had a little English on it to make it go from right to left, but certainly a, a play that should have been made. Brendan Harris stands in. A very pleasant 84 degrees here after the heat wave passed us by during the night and this morning. Harris batting 290. Has four home runs. Traded from Tampa Bay in November of 2007. Tries the bunt, comes up empty. One strike to count to Harris, who went to college at that beautiful colonial campus at William and Mary in Williamsburg, Virginia. Not too far from where you went to school, sir. Well, you got to be smart to get into William and Mary <laughs> and to the University of Virginia. <laughs> well, you can trick a few few people can trick them at that place. I happen to know. Wonder if they're thinking about doing a little running with LaRue behind the plate today. Well, they might. Jason has a very good. He's got a plus arm, I would say. He's not Yachty or Molina. But again, we mentioned Molina banged up. He has a thigh bruise, his right thigh, with the collision with Kadir yesterday, which he characterized as playing baseball the way it should be. Both of them respect each other, and he said they had a conversation afterwards, but there was not a problem with that conversation. They were just talking about it. I'll show you that play at the plate from yesterday. Little leg wick from Kadir as he goes right into that right thigh of Molina. Molina kind of pushes him with his right hand, and, you know, they really got to know each other there, didn't they? 
up close and personal at home plate. But that's the way the game's played. Span has stolen seven bases. He's been thrown out three times. 0 oh and 2 the count. You mentioned Harris went to William and Mary. I had a article shared with me today from the Wall Street Journal about baseball players of the thousand players and managers that are current big leaguers. I happen to know the number of players that have college degrees. And I was astounded. I was too. I was too. We'll let everybody mull that over. This is out of play. You know, I, I, you asked me that question earlier today, and I said, well, probably about 10%. And uh, certainly a lot of fellows have attended college. Right, but absolutely. But the key to the question is have their college degree. And my guess was 15 percent. We're both too high. The answer is 26 out of 1,000 players have college degrees. That would be 2.6, right? I, uh, well, I, I don't know. I'd have to have a college degree. To <laughs> Close play over there at first. Span is back in time. Quick tag by Albert. He's trying to slide to the outfield side of the bag, and that's the only thing that saved him. He is safe, but he, if he goes straight to the bag, he's out. Got to try to catch that back corner. Makes the tag a little bit longer to get there, and Albert knows how to put that glove down. Fouled away. A lot of practice with Molina. On the road this year, Minnesota has a record of 14 and 23. They're 11 and 6 against National League clubs. Batting 271 as a team. Cardinals manager is one of those guys with a degree. He'd be one of those 26. Yes, he would. The smartest three teams, by the way, in that thing are all in last place. Charging hard. Green makes the play. Nice play by Khalil Green, who's at third this afternoon. Leo seems to be a lot more comfortable at third. He's really guarding the line. But takes a good angle. Throws on the run. Plenty of time to get Harris. Green has talked about the fact that there's just a lot less complication to playing third base, which seems to be suiting him well right now. Just like to see him get that bat back that we saw about a week ago when he was red hot. Homers in three straight games. He was just dealing. Here is Joe Maurer, the catcher, had yesterday off. He takes a strike on the outside corner. He's batting 394, 14 home runs, 43 RBIs. The top draft pick of the Twins in 2001. He's a local guy from St. Paul, Minnesota. He is, uh, along with Morneau, they're the poster boys for this Twins club. That's a little low. One ball and one strike. Khalil playing third base this afternoon. Tony the Russo really wanted him in the lineup today, and that is why DeRosa is in left field and not in, at third base. Probably more his natural position, third or second. And he'll get some time in the Cardinal infield, no question about that. And Green's given the opportunity today and hope he can come through with some hits. Here's a shot into right field on one hop to Ludwig. And stops at third. That ball got out to Ludwig very quickly. Joe Maurer can flat out hit. A little bit of a split grip there on a sinker. Came back on the inside part of the plate, and Maurer just crushes that ball to right field. Good play by Brian Ludwig to charge that ball, which we don't see outfielders do a whole lot anymore, Jay. And he came up throwing, hit the cutoff, man. Span so would have scored if right. that ball hadn't have been hit right on the noggin. Justin Morneau batting 310. Morneau takes a strike on the corner. He's from British Columbia. 28 years old, signed through 2013. A long extension. Recently signed. He played for the Canadian World Junior Team. And uh, this is a very talented twosome that you face when you go up against Maurer and Morneau. A little bit like Fielder and Braun, except both of these guys hitting from the left side. Now, Morneau is very good against left handed pitching, also. So that's. You'd think maybe they'd be vulnerable to left handers with both of their studs being 
left-handed hitters, but each of them handles left-handed pitching really well. This down the left field line and into the seats. Our friend Rick Hummel of the Post Dispatch with a wonderful article a couple of days ago about uh, Mantle and Maris, and then uh, Mays and McCovey, and uh, these are the new M and M boys. He says <laughs> well, they're putting up some great numbers. No question about that. He will be the defending champion of the home run derby here during the All Star festivities. Everybody thinks about that great set that Hamilton had last year, but this was the man that won the home run derby. Hamilton wowed everybody, but Morno won it. Cardinals defense playing him deep, straight up in the outfield, not really taking the right center field gap away from him. And Keel straight up, even shading a bit to left center. Another foul out of play. And it'll be interesting uh, to see how Mark DeRosa defends. Over the first week now of course he's going to be more familiar with the twins having played in the American League this year but he hasn't had time to go through the defensive meetings with Joe Patini and Tony La Russa and Dave Duncan and, and Jose Okendo so he's going to be looking into the bench quite a bit and Joe Patini will be positioning him they'll probably communicate a lot with Rick and Keel. they're going to have to learn each other as well not only that but DeRosa being an infielder is going to have to get used to a lot of players that he'll interact with. Here comes the 2 2 from Pinheiro. A long one to right. Way back and gone. No doubt about that one, boys and girls. Three run home run. His 17th round tripper of the season that gives him 61 RBIs. Well, this pitch location, Jay, looked like it was up and in to the left hander. And it really is not a good spot. Really middle in. And Morneau catches up with it, gets the hands out front, and crushes this ball into the bleachers in right field to give the Twins an early lead. And boy. Talked about how good those two guys are in the middle of this lineup, both Maurer and Morno, and we saw a little bit of it right there. They have now scored first in 13 of their last 14 games. Jason Kubel batting 309. Down to Albert. He tossed to Pinheiro, two away. Here's Michael Kadir. He's from down in the tidewater of Virginia, Norfolk. Ninth overall pick in 97. Hitting 281 with 39 RBIs and 11 home runs. This is a team, Rick, that I think will be battling all the way for the Central Division Championship. In the American League. It's amazing how they do it year after year. Minnesota just comes up with new talent. They lose players from time to time. They lost you know, a couple of big ones in Johan Santana, and then they lost Torrey Hunter because they don't really have the resources to sign guys to big contracts late in the career when they're going to be talking about tens of millions of dollars, but they still find a way to win. And Green throws out to Dyer. But Minnesota puts three on the board. The home run by Justin Morneau of 432 feet.
Close in the cleanup spot. We'll see him in other spots in this lineup, too, as uh, the season progresses. He'll hit second some. He'll hit fifth some. But Tony La Russa wanting to use him behind Albert against the left-hander, Francisco Liriano. And here's his numbers. 15 starts, a 3-8 and eight record. Real trouble with his command after coming off Tommy John surgery in 2007. He has not been the same guy that he was in 06 when he was absolutely phenomenal, Jay. He was 12 and 3 with a 2.16 ERA in his rookie season with the Twins in 06. Schumacher leading off, takes inside, one ball and one strike. Skip batting 302, 2 for 5 in this series. Fouled away. Liriano from the Dominican, 25 years old. He went six weeks without a win here recently until he got one uh, in his last start against Milwaukee. A non drafted free agent signed in September of 2000. You mentioned the Tommy John surgery, missed all of 2007 because of that. Two and two. And he just doesn't have his command. He walks a lot of guys. 40 walks in 82 innings. Does strike out a few. He has 74 strikeouts in those 80 innings, but just a little erratic. And the strikeout. Skip has a 10 game hitting streak going coming into today's game. Here's the defensive alignment. Greedy the veteran at third, Morno at first. Kubel, Span, and Kadir from left to right in the outfield. And again, this is a team that you really don't think of these as big name players in Minnesota, and they just find ways of winning, Jay. Well, it's been that way for a long, long time. I can remember. Going to the old Met Stadium when Calvin Griffith was the owner of the Minnesota Twins. They left Washington. They were the Senators, came to Minnesota. Here's a shot into right field. Kadire makes the play. The only thing good about going to Metropolitan Stadium was the wonderful. Fish that they had. They had the fish fry every night. A wonderful walleye. Boy. <laughs> and our director, Tom Mee's dad, was there. It's always good to see him. Here is Albert. 328. 74 RBIs. 28 home runs. Albert three for six in this series. Another multi hit home run game yesterday. Albert you know uh, Rick has uh, 74 RBI's the club record in 1937 Joe Ducky Medwick 154. And we did the math Jay's on pace for 158. 60 homers, 158 RBIs is the pace Albert's on right now. Don't expect him to keep up that pace, but still another big year for Albert. And teams are starting to pitch around him more and more, and that may continue depending upon what DeRosa brings to the club in terms of his offense. Two balls and two strikes. Slapped out to the shortstop. Harris comes on. And the Cardinals go down one, two, three. After an inning of play on a beautiful day at Bush Stadium, three nothing, Minnesota.
broadcast here on News Channel 5, July the 12th. We're on the air at 11.30 as the Cardinals will be playing a day-night doubleheader at Wrigley Field in Chicago, and Channel 5 will broadcast the first game of that uh, duo set for Chicago. at Sunday, July the 12th. Cubs and the Cardinals from Wrigley. Up the middle. That's Joe Creedy. Native of Jefferson City, Missouri. And Creedy leads off with the solid single up the middle. Pinero's pitches have been up just a little bit. That wasn't exactly belt high, but maybe thigh high after the first pitch missed high in the strike zone. Joel Pinero really makes his money by throwing that sinker right at the knees, but frankly, he wasn't helped out very much in that first inning, Jay, by the error by Tyler Green to start this game. That inning might have turned out very differently. Tolbert out into left. DeRosa looks comfortable there, makes the play. Tolbert comes in today batting 181. And Francisco Lariano. He always fun. Yeah, always fun watching an American League pitcher. Come to the plate. You never know what you're going to get. No, and if he gets a hit, you got a big story here. Yeah, he's probably going to be bunning. Cardinals think so. Swinging away. <laughs> Might have missed the sign, though. That's possible. And the third base coach, Scott Olger, yeah, looks he at says, the, Come He on looked out. at Ron Gardenhire and, and he said, do you want to tell him or do you want me to? He looked into the dugout and said, I don't know why he swung at that pitch. I think he assumed that he get, got the verbal sign. A lot of times pitchers get the That's verbal Scott, sign from Scott the Scott Alger, and uh, he's the third base coach. Across the diamond, Jerry White, the former Cardinal, coaching at first base. One ball and one strike. If you're just joining us, 3 nothing, Minnesota. Three run home run by Justin Morneau. Jerry White, the first base coach, is the first guy that I ever saw do the flat bill on the cap. Really? You can't really tell now because he's wearing the hard hat. But right. Jerry said he wore it as a flat bill because that's what reminded him of his drill sergeant when he was in the Army. That's how he wore his hat, and he couldn't stand him. So that was his little tribute to his drill sergeant. Albert charging on that attempted butt. And uh, Lariano unable to come up with it. Two balls and a strike. That catches the outside corner. Liriano looking for a sign. I'm sure the sign is just bunt till you're out. And that's exactly what happens. Here is Span who reached on the error by Green at shortstop and later scored on Morneau's home run. This is the last day of interleague uh, for the Cardinals. They enter the game nine and five. The Twins are eleven and six, and one of the best teams in the last five or six years in terms of interleague play. But that really points to one of the problems of it. There, Jay, you've got a guy that never swings a bat, doesn't own a bat, doesn't own a batting glove, and in interleague play is forced to try to bunt against a big league pitcher. I mean, the fairness of that is is really not what this game's all about. The, the competitive no. fairness of an American League pitcher having to hit after they use the DH all year long is one of the problems of interleague play. It to me has always been a problem. <laughs> <laughs> now you can get rid of the DH that would not, that would solve my well uh, Whitey, Whitey, my Whitey Herzog was on with the guys yesterday on Fox and uh, uh, talking with Dan and uh, Al and that's what he said too. Uh, I mean you, you need to standardize standardize both leagues. Let's all start playing on the same page. huh? One ball and one strike. Out it goes to Green. Tosses over to Schumacher. 
DeRosa comes in from left field. It'll be DeRosa, Ludwig, and, and Keel. Side for a ball. DeRosa in his career, 5 for 23 against the Twins. Batting 270 on this season. Fifty RBIs, 13 home runs. DeRosa is from New Jersey. Selected by the Braves in the seventh round of the 96 draft. That away. Was set to begin his third season with the Cubs prior to a New Year's Eve trade that sent him to the Indians. Gets by. A number of observers in the Windy City area have thought that. It's a bad deal for Chicago. It's been one of their problems that they've missed him and his versatility. I think the Cub fans certainly did have a lot to say about DeRosa not re-signing. He is in his last year of a contract. He'll be a free agent at the end of this year. So the Cardinals gave up a steep price to get him. Hopefully they can keep him. Harris from deep in the hole. Just made the play. Frank Cusimano with the Cardinal general manager. Yes, Jay, he's the author of the trade, John Mosellock. John, the trade was consummated yesterday. How long ago did talks be begin between you and Cleveland? Well, I think in, 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 in earnest, it really happened this week. I mean, obviously, there, there were some rumors, there were some dust discussions um, going back maybe even six weeks, but reality is it was something that I think from their camp just started to um, be come to a conclusion that it was in their best interest to move him and basically they wanted to get the best deals um, from every club that was interested we put our best foot forward on uh, Friday and then tried to accelerate the process yesterday unfortunately it worked out you said something interesting in the press conference you had to take off your visionary hat you don't want to give up good young players like Chris Perez but you got to win now and you got a team that's close well, that's right. I mean, in, in, a, in a perfect world, you'd like to um, keep all the players you draft and develop and allow them to succeed at the major league level. But at some times, you're going to have to make that short-term decision in terms of helping your team now, and that's what we had to do. Final thought, why is he the right piece for this Cardinal puzzle right now? Well, he gives us a lot of flexibility because he can play second, third, and both corner outfields, which is something that gives Tony a lot of flexibility. 
Thank you, John. We appreciate it. Jay, back to you. DeRosa, Ludwig, and Ankeel each ground out. Three to nothing. All the action on your computer at MLB.tv. Catch over 100 live out-of-market games per week. For complete details, visit STLCardinals.com, where baseball is always on. And joining us, the voice of the Cardinals, Mike Shannon, Old Irish, good to see you. Nice to see you, Jennings, and uh, hopefully we can come from behind today, huh? Yes, that's going to have to be the case. Uh, I mentioned... Uh, these uh, Minnesota Twins have uh, scored first in 13 of their last 14 games, and uh, they have a really good lineup. I like their lineup a lot. You know, they all talk about Maurer and Morneau, but I'll tell you what, they have Kubel, they have Kadir, they have Creedy. This is a really good offensive baseball team, and if their pitching holds up, they're going to give the Tigers a run for their money in the American League Central. No question about that. Pinheiro. Against Harris, who grounded out in the first. He takes low. One ball and two strikes. Well, you know, over the years, Mike, Minnesota, they put some very fine teams on the field. They, they kind of play National League baseball. And, correct. Uh, uh, They're very sound fundamentally. And, yep. uh, you are correct. They like the uh, National League style. Ooh, tough play. Good play. Neil Green makes a nice play. No, Good he was mark. pulled off the bag. Albert couldn't quite hold on as the throw was just a little wide. So that'll be the second air, and you can't you can't give a good team more than uh, three outs in any. And he made the tough part of it. Then uh, the throw uh, took him off as he uh, threw wide over there. They capitalized on the first air when uh, Span reached in the first inning, and they got the three-run homer. Now they need that double play ball. So errors. By Tyler Green and Khalil Green, and here is Maurer. Green is turning to Brown. It's no good here. Maurer singled and later scored on the Morneau home run. This fellow was a tremendous high school All America athlete, both in basketball, baseball, and football. He uh, had a scholarship to Florida State University. Yeah, they wanted him to be a quarterback. But I think he took the right route. <laughs> Went to the same high school as Paul Molitor. And uh, as I mentioned, if he follows the same route, he'll be doing he'll be okay, doing won't he? Right. Yes, sir. 
But uh, there's no uh, there's no end to this guy's ability. And a lot of people are talking about getting him out of the catcher position, getting him uh, to play another position so he can uh, prolong his career. In the hole in left, another hit for Maurer. Two on and none out. Just steps from the arch in Bush Stadium. Enjoy unmatched hospitality in a prime location at Hyatt Regency St. Louis Riverfront. Take advantage of Hyatt's exclusive baseball package. It includes overnight accommodations, your choice of two or four Cardinal tickets, a complimentary uh, Rawlings baseball bat, a $10 food and beverage voucher that is valid at the Tiffany Rose or Brewhouse restaurants. Check out the Hyatt Regency Riverfront, St. Louis. He tried to sneak a fastball up and in by uh, this guy with two strikes the last time up there, and it didn't work. And the double play is turned. And a nice pick out there by Tyler Green on a hot shot. Yeah, he hit that ball right on the button, but that's what you look for from Pinero. When he has that sinker going, he can work both sides of the plate with it. When he's really effective, like he was up in Shea, or excuse me, up in uh, New York at their new stadium. City Field, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, City Field. He would get that curveball over for strike one, and then he would use both sides of the plate with that singer and uh, he was something he's he got like 22 ground ball outs in that win up there when he shut him out. Here's Kubel who grounded out in the first inning and Pinero with a chance to get out of this jam. You're just joining us three nothing Minnesota. Morneau's three run homer in the first inning scoring span and Maurer in front of it. That catches the outside corner. He keeps giving him that pitch. Call that low strike. He'll be all right, but he's got to get it down there. This lineup is very, very strong, especially from three through seven. I mean, you look at the home run and the RBI total, they're outstanding. Starting with the Mauer, he has 14 and 43. In Marneau, he has 17 and uh, 61. Kubo 13 and 41, Kadire 11 and 39, and Creedy, who hits seventh, has 11 homers and 35 RBI. It's very, very good. Very Strength strong. all the way up and down. Yep. The one-two pitch, low. They're comfortable too. They know they don't have to do it by themselves. They have a lot of help. They pick one another up. And uh, Kubo right now will try to pick up. Morneau, who picked up the entire team with that three run homer in the first inning. There up the did. middle, RBI for Kubo. Boy, that's a number big, 42. That's a big two out base hit. And once again, you see that the Cardinal pitcher got the ball up in the strike zone. The sinker ball pitchers that pitch up in the strike zone they usually wind up working at uh, General Motors. Pinheiro coming off that magnificent performance up in New York. But, that was a uh, pretty good pitch there, yeah. Kadire grounded out to end the first inning. Deep in the hole, long throw by Tyler Green for the out. But Minnesota plates one, they lead four to nothing.
Here is one of the truly great teachers in the history of the game, Mr. George Kissel. A man who touched so many in the game. LaRue with a long shot to left. And it's caught right at the wall out there by Kubel. Boy, he got good wood on that one. Jason LaRue is a perfect guy for this baseball team. Picking up for a guy that catches 90% of the games. LaRue has been a very, very big help to this baseball team. And uh, he's no slouch when he gets in there. He's batting over 300. In fact, 333 is a starter. Pinheiro takes a strike. Atlanta playing in Atlanta against the Red Sox out in front 2 0. Fourth inning. Swing and a miss. The Sox are leading the Cubs. 2 0. Third inning. Join News Channel 5 every Sunday morning at 10 for Wings of Hope Cardinal Nation. 30 minutes of in depth stories, interviews, and features. That's Wings of Hope Cardinal Nation here on your home for the Cardinals, News Channel 5. Boy, that's a show that's really caught on. Yeah. Tyler Green stands in. Two strikeouts now for Liriano. He's trying to go through the Cardinal order. Zip zipped the first three, isn't he? Redbeards are 16 and 13 playing day baseball and 22 and 17 here at home this season. Ironic that Liriano comes in with a record of 22 and 17. That's his lifetime mark. Three and eight this season. He's got a piece of it. He's another player, Mike. Who? Can be happy that there's such a thing as Tommy John surgery. <laughs> so you look back at his record. Two years back, he was dynamite. Yes, he was. Over to Tolbert. The second baseman throws him out. And the Cardinals go again. One, two, three. After three, four nothing Minnesota. Ball on News Channel 5 is brought to you by the original $6 thick burger at Hardee's. 100% black Angus beef, 
all for around four bucks. It's finally back at Hardee's. By Bank of America, Cardinals banking only at Bank of America, and by Schnucks, where you'll find low prices, no sacrifices. Joe Creedy, the Missourian, leading off here. Lives out in Westphalia, Missouri. Born in Jeff City. Drafted by the White Sox in 96. Signed with Minnesota as a free agent. Greedy with a single up the middle back in the second inning. Another great crowd on hand here and that little rain and cold front that came through late last night and early this morning has really made it a pleasant afternoon here at the park. That'll do it for Creedy. The second strikeout. You can help put Albert and Yachty in the All Star starting lineup. Fans who vote at least 20 times online and choose Cardinals as their favorite team will be entered automatically to win the Vote Cardinals sweepstakes. The grand prize two tickets to every All Star event at Bush Stadium. The sweepstakes and the online balloting run through July 2nd. For details, visit stlcardinals.com. Some prize, huh? Oh boy. Two tickets to every event. Matt Tolbert fly to left in the second inning. Tolbert's 27 years old from Macomb, Mississippi. Attended the University of Mississippi. He was an all-state football and baseball player in high school. He's also a great track star. He was a long jump champion in the state of Mississippi. He's got the lowest batting average among any of these starters right now at 179. Two balls and two strikes. Tolbert who flied to left back in the second. The Redbirds will welcome the San Francisco Giants tomorrow evening for a four game set. This one will play for Schumacher. Oh, it's amazing. What a good job he's done at second base for the Cardinals. It's just really phenomenal. Is. Cardinals baseball is brought to you by Bank of America. Cardinals banking only at Bank of America. Think of the transition that he's made. It's been phenomenal. You can't say much. Can't say too much about him. No. I mean, he's played second base like you just couldn't imagine. Liriano hits it out to Tyler Green. That's going to do it. They're down one, two, three. Three and a half innings have been played. It's four to nothing, Minnesota.
June 28th of 98 the twins Bob Tewksbury retires Mark McGuire twice with 44 mile per hour lobs <laughs> Tell you, it's not that easy to throw a pitch over the plate at that speed no it's not the Tukes man he's Tukes a was something wasn't yeah, he great guy when Wonderful. I think of the talent that he had he quite a com accomplished yeah. artist too yeah works for the Red Sox these days in the sports psychology area Oh, we had those when I was playing. <laughs> yeah, you did, but <laughs> yeah, they nobody, were bartenders all over. The no, <laughs> yeah. Nobody, nobody identified them. That was the <laughs> oh only yeah, thing. we were identified. <laughs> Joe in San Francisco. <laughs> we worked at the hotel. <laughs> two strikes to Schumacher takes outside one ball and two strikes. Schumacher struck out to start the Cardinals back in the first. Those guys uh, have a. Quite lengthy residency, you know that. Yes. <laughs> you never stop learning, do you? I mean, the bartender. Right. <laughs> that's high. Two balls and two strikes. Yeah, it's a wonderful life if you don't weaken, right, Jenny? Got to be strong, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to love it. We need to start getting some people on base here. Yes, sir. Well, we've got a full count on Schumacher. Mariano went through the first nine and now he's seeing the situation where the Redbirds are seeing him for a second time that's fouled off. Oh it's a nice crowd. We've had some good crowds here. Yes. A lot of Minnesota people have come down a lot of twins fans. Good for them. It's a big game rubber game of the three game set. We need to come back. Here's one into center field. Span, who can really move, goes over and makes the play. Well, I like that Span. He's a good looking center fielder. Need a hero? Be a hero. Join News Channel 5's Hero Central. You can help those in our community by volunteering. Find out how you can get help. Just visit KSDK.com and click on Hero Central. Khalil Green bats with one out here in the fourth. He flied to right. That's low. This is a pretty good looking catcher besides being he an offensive sure is. Press. They say he's a terrific handler of the pitching staff. He's a great citizen. Uh, Wonderful young man. And he's from the area. Yeah. There. One ball and one strike. Mike, I was reminding uh, Rick Horton of a little fact that I remembered so well in '87, the World Series, the Redbirds and the Twins. The home team won every game mm -hmm. in that series, and that was the first time that had ever happened in the World Series. And then they did it again uh, a few years later. They That's won right. Two championships and uh, didn't win any game on the road, but they won all eight at home. Three strikeouts for Lariano. Cardinal fans, when it comes to tickets, you deserve major league service. Go online to StubHub, the official fan to fan ticket marketplace of the Cardinals. It's the only site. With fan protect guarantee. Here's Albert. He grounded out in the first. Two home runs yesterday, the sixth time this season that he's had multi hit home run games. And 29 multi hit home run games in his career. You want to watch some? Just watch, watch his bat. He doesn't do anything with his bat until he comes after the baseball. He just holds it there, and then when he goes to swing, it doesn't do anything but go right to the ball. Watch this. It doesn't do anything. You can put a dime on the top of his bat, and uh, if he doesn't swing, it won't move. He just has such a short stroke, so compact. Just watch the bat. He swings at this pitch. 
How about the play he made in the seventh inning yesterday well, out I mean, there at he, first? He, he's an all-around player. He's a great base runner. He's just a, well, he's a once-in-a-lifetime player. The yeah. Cardinals have always seemed to come up with one like that. See that? It just there's no wasted effort or movement between the bat and the ball when he swings. It just goes directly to the ball. Very compact. Very short swing. And that spells trouble for pitchers. And now a payoff pitch coming from Lariano. Mm. There goes his perfect game. The walk to Pulhos. And Mark DeRosa, who grounded out in the second, comes to the plate. He got a terrific ovation when he was introduced here this afternoon. These Cardinal fans are so knowledgeable. They know that the Redbirds have been looking for someone to uh, help bolster this offense, and they're very appreciative of ownership going out and accomplishing that. Frank was on with John Mozalak, who talked about the negotiations and uh, the general manager thanking ownership for allowing him to uh, make this deal. Well, it's tough to go shopping without any cash. <laughs> Not kidding. Down to third. Greedy throws on over to Tolbert, and that's going to do it. After four innings of play, it's 4 0 Minnesota. Arches on parade. We're seeing these arches all around town. Tell our audience a little bit about them. Thanks, Frank. Yeah, we have in preparation for the All Star game, you've probably hopefully seen up around St. Louis 15 All Star arches. They're up in Keener Plaza around Bush Stadium in Forest Park. And please go out. They're a great way to get ready for the game and you can get your picture taken in front of them. And then they're also going to be a great way uh, to get a souvenir. The St. Louis Sports Commission, Major League Baseball, and the Cardinals are giving St. Louisans the opportunity to actually purchase these after the All-Star game and um, keep them as a souvenir. So if you sign up for this package, you get tickets for the entire weekend of festivities in the All-Star game, plus these 10-foot arches you actually can take home and put in your backyard. Absolutely. They actually weigh 1,500 pounds, so we'll help you move them. But it's a great way to commemorate the, the All-Star Game and keep your own souvenir after the game and put it up in your company's lobby and their building or even put it in your backyard if you want. 
Carrie, we appreciate the visit. Thanks so much. Thank you. That's Carrie Younger from the St. Louis Sports Commission. Sounds like a great thing for the Rick Horton backyard. Back to you, man. I could use an arch in my backyard. I could use a little better fielding this afternoon. The third error of the day, Schumacher throws wide. The Redbirds infield now with errors by Khalil Green, Tyler Green, and Skip Schumacher. And 52 errors on the season now for the Cardinals. Only 28 for the entire Minnesota Twins ball club. Here's Harris who grounded out and then reached on an error in the third. Out to Albert. He goes to third. Out. The third base umpire. Todd Titchener had to hold on for just a second to make sure that Khalil Green held that ball. Looking for something to do in St. Louis? Check out MetroMix.com. From the city's best concerts and events, the newest restaurants and bars, where to go and what to do in St. Louis, visit MetroMix.com. That was quite a play by Albert Pujols, which began with his positioning. He positions himself. He plays in so that he can make that play at third base. Most first basemen won't even think about making that throw. Albert very daring defensively, and that's a big out. Joe Maurer's average is back to 400. He singled and scored in the first, singled again in the third. One ball and one strike. One on and one out. Four nothing Minnesota. In for a strike. Well, here's that last play. Albert Pujols is so daring defensively. He's so far in on the right side of the infield that he's able to make that play. Every base runner is taught if it's hit to the right side, you can go to third. Well, not that time. Just misses two and two. White Sox three nothing over the Cubs. South side of Chicago this afternoon, fourth inning. Hot shot to Green. Double play. Six four three. Minnesota leads four nothing after four and a half.
Reservations now for affordable fun at Fairmont Park. And by Jack in the Box, where you can get anything on the menu, any time of day. With Rick Horton, Mike Shannon, of course, joining us earlier. Jay Randolph with you. We move to the bottom of the fifth inning. Time for a little trivia presented by the great folks at Schnooks. How many of the Twins 12 World Series home games have they lost? Hmm. Well. That's a pretty good record. Uh, yeah. I. Well I know they didn't lose any in 1987. I'm reasonably sure and of that. The next time around uh, they didn't lose any. I had a great seat for those four games. Yes you did. <laughs> Here's a shot off the bat of Ludwig. First hit of the game. All the way to the wall. A stand up double. Bud Light, the difference is drinkability, presents What's on Tap. And tomorrow, with coverage beginning at 6 30 on Fox Sports Midwest. The Giants and the Cardinals. It'll be Lincecum against Thompson. Well, you take care of the no hitter. Now you take care of the shutout. And Keel grounded out. Ooh, it's a fair ball. A busted bat. Ludwig comes home. And Keel into second with the RBI. And Keel's. 21st RBI of the season. A double just inside the line. And the birds are on the board. Sometimes it's not how hard you hit it, it's where you hit it. This ball jams Ant Keel. The bat dies a hero. And Ant Keel ends up with a double, back to back doubles for the Cardinals here in the fifth inning. So you've got the no hitter taken care of. Then the shutout. And you got a little more work to do to get. The Cardinals on top as Lots. they now trail by three. Lots of time. This fellow really hit the ball hard deep to left center field back in the third inning. Jason LaRue doing the catching this afternoon. Molina in that collision yesterday at home plate. A little sore today, getting the day off. Up the middle. And Keel coming home. Play at the plate, not in time. Four to two. LaRue gets his third RBI of the season. Well, there's a nice way to start off the bottom of the fifth inning. Three straight hits. Jose Okendo very aggressive in sending Rick Ann Keel on this base hit up the middle by Jason LaRue. He sends him because he knows the pitcher's coming up next. And he is very energetic about sending Ankyo, who rounds third very well, doesn't take too wide of a turn, and is in standing up as pitching coach Rick Anderson now has some words with his starter, Francisco Liriano, who was just cruising through four innings. All of a sudden, the Cardinals have figured something out here, Jay, the second time through the lineup. Are you tired of waiting for your five day forecast? News Channel 5 brings you forecast first. Every weathercast begins and ends with your five day forecast. It's the most important part of weather coverage. Forecast first only from News Channel 5. LaRue well, got that base hit too, Jay, because he was trying to hit the ball the other way. He was staying back, just trying to hit it on the right side, ended up hitting it up the middle. But he knew what he was doing, and it worked. And that's fouled out of play. You saw those. Fans with their rally caps turned around during that half inning. That's helped. There they are. Never too young to start with the rally cap, there I always go. say. Yes, sir. Pinheiro having trouble laying down the bunt. I say it so often, it's a lost art. Strike two. At Cleveland, the Reds eight, Cleveland one. They're in the seventh inning on the lakefront in Cleveland. 
Washington leads Baltimore four to one seventh inning at Baltimore. Tampa Bay three to one over Florida at Tampa Bay in the seventh. He got it down this time. Good job. Sacrifice goes one four. You're looking for free summer fun. That's right free. Then head down to live on the levee July 17th through August 1st. Every Friday and Saturday night you enjoy a free concert. Great fireworks under the arch. For a list of the performers visit KSDK.com. Baseball always brings you an opportunity for redemption. Sometimes. In the next game sometimes in the next series but the next three Cardinal hitters. Have all made errors behind Joel Pinero, and they can help him out here by getting a couple more runs across to help out Pinero after he does get the bunt down. He didn't look too good the first couple of swings, no, but he hung in there, though. But he did hang in there yep. and got the job done. Now, Tyler Green, who made an error to lead off this game, then Schumacher, then Khalil Green, they all have errors. Let's see if they can get to Liriano. That's inside Tyler. Is 0 for 7 in this series. Grounded out in the third inning. Time called. Tyler is just about at his minor league career average, low 250s. If you're interested, Ryan is not playing, continuing to have the problem with the wrist. He could be a pinch runner, and that's about all right now. Molina can play, but he's got the bruise on his right thigh. Cardinals also a strike. Also have Chris Duncan, Colby Rasmus, and Joe Thurston from the left side. And the two right handers we just mentioned, Ryan and Molina. That's the Cardinals bench. They're going with one less pitcher right now. Tony told us before the game he'd still prefer 13 if he can get there. So doesn't know when that change is going to take place. But with DeRosa coming and Chris Perez going to Cleveland, that leaves the Cardinals with 12 pitchers. Sometimes think Tony would like to have 16 pitchers. <laughs> Minnesota only has 11. <laughs> I know. There were times back in the day where teams would go with nine. That's right. Tony likes to have a lot of options in the middle of the game, and and frankly, all those options worked out pretty well yesterday. Half a dozen. Yeah. And they all did their job. The matchups work. Chopper out to the shortstop, Harris. He throws on. LaRue goes over to third. Mary Jane Thayman is here at the ballpark today, Jay, and we get a chance to see her at a lot of Cardinal games. She's celebrating her 90th birthday oh. here at the ballpark, and she's been coming to Cardinal games for 83 years. When she turned seven, her parents asked her what, he, what she wanted for her birthday. She said, I want to go to my first Cardinal game. And for 83 years, she has been rooting for our favorite team and she is here at the ballpark today. There she is on the left. Here's Schumacher with a shot out to Harris and Harris makes the play in time. The Redbirds get two here in the fifth. After five four two Minnesota.
Channel 5's Rennie Knott and Frank Cusimano for highlights and coverage of all the hometown teams. The Don Brown Deal Sports Plus tonight, following the late news right here on News Channel 5. And this is popped up off the bat of Morneau. DeRosa's there to make the play. I understand on Sports Plus tonight, there'll be a profile of Bob Keppel, the St. Louisan, who is on this Twins team and looked pretty good on the mound yesterday for them in relief. Yeah, the graduate of DeSmet High School was very good. Four innings, just two hits as we look at the high sky here at Bush Stadium this afternoon. Keppel with an outstanding performance, giving a shot, giving a shot here in Minnesota to revive his big league career. Good for him. Kubel grounded out in the first and singled and picked up an RBI in the third. A long one down the right field line. Coming over Ludwig. He can't get to it. It's up in the seats foul. Nice to get Morno out, isn't it? Start mm -hmm. out the inning and Joel Pinheiro settling down. Really deserves a better fate here. Only two of the four runs have been earned. And he's given up just five hits through five innings. So he's been okay. Defense has let him down some, but at least he's pitching here into the sixth inning. And we talked at the onset, Jay, that so Cardinals important. really needed him to go deep in this game. Right. Gave up three runs in the first, a single run in the third. The Birds have committed three errors. That hasn't helped things. Both clubs have left two on. 4 5 and 0 oh for Minnesota. Two. That's going to get through. Tyler Green making a move to try to get to that ball, just couldn't. News Channel 5 is proud to sponsor Major League Baseball Fan Fest coming to America's Center July 10th through the 14th. Fan Fest, a chance for you and your family to participate in hands on exhibits, experience baseball history. Be part of this all-star game celebration happening right here in our town. For tickets, call 1-888-FANFEST. That's 1-888-FANFEST. We got a note from Scott Cooper, former Cardinal, who is running a baseball outfit, the St. Louis Gamers, and they're having tryouts coming up July 28th through the 29th, ages 12 to 17. can register at stlgamers.net. Scott Cooper does that with another former big league pitcher who lives in St. Louis, Matt Whiteside. A lot of former Cardinal players and former big leaguers in St. Louis. I understand there are 50 former Cardinal players alone that live in the St. Louis area. And so many of them do so much for the community, the Cardinal alumni. A lot of nice stories at the ballpark. Uh, you and I heard a story today about Ed Shane Dean's granddaughter. And Red was a former Cardinal, I think. Wasn't yes, he, he was. Yeah. But his granddaughter, at her very first game, yeah. Jay, this weekend, caught a foul ball off the bat of Justin Morneau, and he signed it for her. Imagine that. That's terrific. That's amazing. Her first time at a major league game. Something about being a Shane Beast. Yeah. Something special about being a Shane Beast. Mm -hmm. So he's such a classy guy. You you will not find anybody in this game that will say something bad about Red Shane. Now, you can find somebody who'll say something bad about pretty much everybody else. I mean, you can't you can't, you can't have everybody love you, Jay. It's just the way it is. But in Red's case, literally, no one can think of one bad word to say about this guy. And he doesn't say anything bad about anybody else either. He's a very classy man, and we're we're lucky to have him around. Yes, indeed. Center field and Keel back to the track. Two away. Here's the young man who had a nice look at that catch. As we swing in from center field. Pinheiro now faces Joe Creedy. That's what he saw a moment ago, Rick. And Keel backing up right in front of him. He's thinking, maybe I had a shot at catching. Creedy has singled and struck out this afternoon.
What a great view. A lot of. A lot of thoughts come to your mind to watching a young man here at the ballpark watching his favorite player play. Hoping someday he can be a Cardinal outfielder himself. Swing and a miss. Oh and two to Creedy. That's low. Detroit and Houston playing down in the Houston Park, two two seventh inning. Houston's not going away. No. Really, Pittsburgh hasn't been eliminated either. Pittsburgh's only five games out in last place in the National League Central. Milwaukee and the Cardinals tied. Cincinnati and Chicago three and a half games back, and Houston just four games out. 2 2 pitch popped up. Albert in foul territory makes the play. Five and a half innings. 4 2 Minnesota. For an encore performance from Joel Pinheiro, the defense has hurt him a bit, but he hasn't been too bad. The Cardinals looking through DeRosa colored glasses today. Happy to have him. He's 0 for 2, and Albert Pujols, 0 for 1, has not done any damage yet. So the Cardinals are behind 4 to 2 as they hit here in the bottom of the sixth. It is nice to have Mark DeRosa in this lineup, though, Jay. Glad he's here. I really enjoyed visiting with him. A uh, very Classy veteran. It'll be most interesting to watch and see how much he can mean to this club. And when you listen to him talk, you can tell he's not from the South. <laughs> he's a Jersey boy. Uh, Green strikes out for the second time in the game, and he's 0 for 3 this afternoon. That is the fourth strikeout for Lariano. San Francisco is playing at Milwaukee. They're in the sixth. Giants headed in here tonight for a four game set starting tomorrow. They lead Milwaukee 4 0 in the sixth inning. Hard to say whether San Francisco or Los Angeles is the surprise team in the National League. LA, we knew would be good, but not as good as they are, particularly without Manny. But the San Francisco Giants are 
off to a great start. They've got good pitching and we're going to see some of it. Yeah if you uh, want to see one of the best young pitchers in the entire game. Tim Lincecum goes tomorrow night for them here and he is a dandy. Mm. You don't see Albert fooled very often. And he just was on that off speed delivery from Liriano. Who has four strikeouts on the afternoon. Pittsburgh is playing at Kansas City and leading five to four in the eighth inning. Excuse me. That is in Pittsburgh. Yes, that's right. And I'm going to change that because it's raining there now. Kansas City at Pittsburgh. It's Kansas City leading three to one. Two and two the count. Albert strikes out and that's five strikeouts for Liriano. We'll make that our Hardy's hot pitch of the game. And it's a little slider down and in that he's really fooling the right handed hitters with more than the break. It's the off speed nature of that slider it's spinning down and in same pitch he struck out Khalil Green on the start this inning and now five strikeouts for Liriano and there's that pitch again he's not throwing it very hard just a little spinner down and in and Cardinal hitters are swinging over the top of it. Philadelphia playing at Toronto leading five to four in the eighth inning. Here's a play for Creedy and he throws out DeRosa and the Cardinals go one two three here in the six after six Minnesota four St. Louis two. The accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cardinals. Matt Tolbert leading it off as we go to the seventh inning. He flies it out into the seats and left. These left handed hitters for Minnesota really know how to go the other way with the ball. We've seen a couple hits that way. Kubel had one in the sixth. Maurer had one in the third. And there Tolbert, the switch hitter, trying to go the other way with that sinker from Pinheiro. Up the middle. Tolbert has his first hit of the day. After flying the left and grounding out. And this is what happens when you stay back on the ball. Wait, wait, wait. The ball does its breaking, and now you just drop the bat hit on it, and you either hit it up the middle or hit it the other way. And another leadoff base runner for Minnesota.
Bunt is a dandy. Sacrifice is good. Talk about this team doing things that you have to do to play good baseball, the good fundamentals, they do it. And Liriano learned how to bunt since 130. Couldn't bunt at 130, but he can bunt now. But it must have had some quick lessons from Ron Gardenhire down inside the clubhouse because that was a perfect bunt. But it really is indicative of the way the Twins play baseball. Very, very sound fundamentally. Here's Span, who reached on an error and scored in the first, grounded out in the second, reached on an error in the fifth. The left hander Miller warming up for the Cardinals in the bullpen. They'll have him set for Joe Maurer just in case. Probably the last inning for Joel Pinero here as he works in the seventh inning. Pitch counts fairly low. He is scheduled to hit fourth for the Cardinals in the bottom of the seventh. One ball and one strike. Keel is in position to be able to throw out the runner at home plate. He's playing a shallow center field. Tolbert, the runner there. DeRosa, the left fielder, asked all the Cardinal coaches and Tony about DeRosa as a defensive player, and they all said that, you know, he played well against us. We have to see him play on a daily basis, but he's a little deeper in left, and Ludwig in right field has a, has a good arm in right, not a great arm, but a good arm, and charges the ball hard. That's a big run out there at second. Span has just four home runs on the year. You got to make him hit it over your head, I think, in this situation. Play shallow enough. Give yourself a chance to throw out a runner at home. Two balls and a strike. That's wide, three and one. Three run home run by. Morneau in the first. And Harris reaching on an error and scoring in the third on an RBI by Kubel. Do not want to walk Span. If you do, you're going to have to pitch to Maurer in this inning, which means Pinero won't finish this inning. Knocked down out there by Green. It'll be a base hit for Span, who has that terrific speed. But uh, Tyler Green didn't let that ball get through. If it had, uh, Tolbert might very well have scored. Looked as if he was a little late getting set. Players do a little movement before they get set. He does a great job of keeping this ball in the infield, but he was still moving to his right when that ball was hit to his left, and he had the opposite problem in the first inning. Yeah, a little similar. I was going to say that it went the other way and when he committed the error in the first. But this one, I think he was still getting his feet set. They usually do a little called a creep step or they're moving towards home right as the pitch is coming. And it looked as if his right foot hadn't gotten set yet. And he was still going to his right when the ball was hit to his left. Give me another look at it here. Tyler Green, very good defensively, but he's going to be taking that last step a little bit to his right still. And he's taken that step and the ball's already hit to his left. So he has to stop, go back in the other direction. Again, great athleticism to keep that ball in the infield. But he might have been a little late on that. Tolbert over there at third. Span at first. Fouled away. And unless this is a double play, this is Joel Pinero's last batter. There's no way that Tony will let him pitch to Joe Maurer. 
The Twins will leave St. Louis this evening and have a relatively short trip over to Kansas City where they begin a series tomorrow. A lot of the Minnesota fans as we mentioned are here and a lot of them will make the trek over to Kansas City to get a chance for these. Two away series in the interleague play and then of course. Getting back to the American League action in Kansas City against the Royals. Into left field. Handled out there by DeRosa. And coming in to score, the fifth run of the afternoon is Tolbert on the sacrifice fly. The RBI is number 20 for Harris. And that's our first chance to see the arm of Mark DeRosa. Not a bad throw from left field. He does a nice job of centering himself behind the ball and comes up with a pretty strong throw to the plate, but no chance as he's unfortunately too deep to be able to throw the runner out at home. And with the Twins scoring that run, it looks like Pinero will get a shot at Joe Maurer. Maurer batting 398 as he stands in. Now LaRue wants to go out and chat with him. Or maybe not. Or maybe not. Right. Mauer maybe singled and scored in the first. He singled in the third and then grounded into a double play in the fifth. But that's going to be it, I'm guessing. Yep. That's the most fake conversation in baseball. The catcher knows he's just out there to stall. What do you say? Nice job. Get him next time. I say we're going to have a pitching change and we'll be back with more right after this. MomsLikeMe.com, local website for St. Louis moms by St. Louis moms. That's MomsLikeMe.com, where St. Louis moms meet. Trevor Miller, the left-hander, his 32nd appearance, came in yesterday and struck out the two batters that he faced. In fact, he has struck out the last three that he has faced. Numbers have been very good, particularly against left-handers. 122. Is what left handers are hitting against him and he picks up a fair number of strikeouts against the left handers and he's got a tough assignment in Joe Maurer who does hit left handers well. Miller throws over. Miller from Louisville, Kentucky. It's a little low. Well, it's not a great outing by Pinero, but it's a good outing for the Cardinal right-hander. Did not walk a batter, and that's one of the reasons 
he's able to keep his team in the game. It's five to two Minnesota, but it would be a lot worse if he picked had some walks in the middle of some of those eight hits. Right. And again, the defense didn't help him out. It should be it should be three to two right now. Two balls and no strikes. Miller originally selected by the Tigers way back in 91 in the 41st. Uh, overall, he was in the, the supplemental pick of the Tigers. And he has been around. That's a beauty right in there. There's a lot of confidence with his slider. Doesn't really matter what the count is. Throws that for strikes as well as he does his fastball. He'll come on top a little bit more against right handers, but he tries to stay low against the left handers to create that awkward angle where the left hander is almost hitting the ball coming from behind it. Fouled away. He's been with uh, the Tigers, then with Houston, Philadelphia, the Dodgers. Tampa Bay back to Houston. Back to Tampa Bay. And to the Cardinals. And he's a marathoner, Jay. Likes to run. Well, you know, when you only pitch a third of an inning every couple days, you got to do something else with your time. Might as well train to run marathons. Another toss over to first. I know it's not that simple. Well, he's a classy veteran. Cardinals lucky to have him out in the bullpen. Last few years, that's been an issue for the Cardinals. Their left handed relief, and he and Dennis Reyes both have solidified that. I think they were great moves in the offseason. And they've got him hung up. He is out. At the end of six and a half, 5 2, Minnesota. This portion of Cardinals baseball on News Channel 5 is brought to you by Dave Munganas, Lexus of St. Louis, and Plaza Lexus. They invite you to test drive a Lexus today. And by Amco Transmissions. And a whole lot more. Beautiful view of downtown St. Louis. And there's the view from Kimo's Restaurant, one of my favorite places. Mama Cusimano making some magic in the kitchen. Oh, yeah. Really is a beautiful day at the ballpark today. The Cardinal fans would like to be thrilled here in the last three innings, try to get to 
Francisco Liriano who has been very good through six innings just the one bad inning the fifth where the Cardinals picked up a couple of runs there on the only three hits that they have all afternoon got the three hits in a row double from Ludwig double from Ankeel single from LaRue Ludwig grounded out in the second inning two balls and two strikes Three times this year, Liriano has been able to get through seven innings. Actually, his longest outing of the year was against Detroit on the 4th of May, where he went seven and a third. And he just has 76 pitches, more strikes than usual from Liriano. A shot into left. And a way to go. In a while since he had two hits in the game. Way to go, Ryan Ludwig. Timing perfect on this. Timing matters for Ryan Ludwig. He has a lot of movement as the ball's on its way, but he catches up to that, lines it in the left. And they're starting to uh, get busy in the bullpen for the Twins out and left. And Keel doubled and picked up the RBI in the fifth. Takes one low and inside. About a carbon copy of the fifth inning. That'd be fine. Am I asking for too much, Jay? Little action in Minnesota bullpen. That's R.A. Dickey, the right handed knuckleballing reliever. Hard to have a knuckleball. I was going to say we well, don't we don't see that very often, do we? No, that's that's tough. He's got he's got a fastball too, but he's got he pitch with a knuckleball in relief with runners on base. You're asking for trouble. That's a little low. Jose Majeris also throwing out in the bullpen. For the Twins. Did he go around? Yes. Two balls and two strikes to Ankiel. Bottom of the seventh inning. 5 8 and 0 for Minnesota. 2 4 and 3 for the Cardinals. Liriano has been getting his outs with that off speed pitch, and it almost looks like a changeup. Off of a slider. It's got a little slider spin to it, but it's just going down and away from lefties down and in on right hand. There it is again. It's not a real sharp pitch. It's not the hard, sharp slider at in the high 80s that he had when he was younger, but it's really serving its purpose because the Cardinals are just not picking it up very well, and he's throwing it in good spots where they can't really do much damage. Here's a big pitch in this game, full count. On the ground, play made to second, get the lead man. As Mark Morneau came up with it. Pretty good play by Morneau as Ankiel tried to hit that ball in that hole between first and second. I thought for a second it might squeak through there. He didn't hit it very well. And we'll see what Jason LaRue can do. He had an RBI base hit. In that fifth inning, hit the ball hard his first at bat too, Jay. First final in Major League Baseball of the day. Washington Nationals beat the Baltimore Orioles in Baltimore Ooh. five to three. I think they're going to have a parade in Washington. <laughs> they might. There's a strike right over the heart of the plate to Larue, who has fly deep to left in the fifth. He singled and picked up an RBI. Runners going almost hit him. That was a great jump by Rick Anfield, who steals his first base of the season, and he stole this off of Liriano. He's gone already. Ball almost hits LaRue. Not an easy pitch for the catcher to throw on anyway, as Maurer had to come up and in on LaRue, but that stolen base by Anfield 
was off of the pitcher 100 percent. Thurston has come out on deck. One ball and one strike. They get two and one. Another final Cincinnati defeats Cleveland eight to one in Cleveland this afternoon. Just joining it's five to two Minnesota. Bottom of the seventh inning. Beautiful afternoon here at Bush. Foul away. And in case you've just joined us, Jason LaRue is starting behind the plate today to give Yadier Molina the day off. He's okay. He could be playing today, but he does have a bruise on his right thigh from the collision at home plate. He's available to come in. Tony LaRusso may decide to do a double switch later on. So Molina is prepared to play. He said, I feel fine. I can I can go out there, but it wouldn't hurt to have a day off. Stopped by Creedy. He picks it up and he throws. Yeah. Well, Creedy made quite a play. That ball almost got by him. And he just nips LaRue at first. That's our defensive play of the day presented by Steak and Shake. Well, the Cardinal fans don't like the call, but he is out as Creedy knocks it down. And here's where Jason LaRue wishes he was born a little faster. Otherwise, he'd have himself an infield hit there. But ball hit hard by LaRue. Nice backhand play by Creedy. And he saves a run. And Thurston is the pinch hitter. Joe batting 230 has a home run 19 RBIs. And keel out there at second. That's low. Triple, a walk, and a hit by pitch in yesterday's affair. Comes up empty, one ball and one strike. Again, the Cardinals using a left hander here, Jay, because there's not a lot of options from the right side. You don't want to pinch hit Molina because if you have to change your catcher later in the game, you're stuck. You've only got LaRue, and that's it. And then Ryan can't hit, so you've got to pinch hit a left hander. And I know Tony likes to have a lot of pitchers, but. Man, you'd like to have more guys on the bench, wouldn't you? Just to be able to hit in situations like this. Lariano gets a strike call on a high pitch. But again, Tony would prefer to have 13 pitchers and not 12 as they have currently. But I just I just think the balance is better at 12. One ball 11. and two strikes. Two and two. Again, a reminder tomorrow evening. Tim Lincecum, seven and two in a 2.57 ERA against Brad Thompson, who's two and three on the year, an ERA of 4.50. The first of four against the Giants here tomorrow night. That's inside. And what a pitching pairing we have on Tuesday evening. Carpenter and Johnson. Doesn't get much better than that, does it? Think there'll be a few strikeouts in that game? Tickets remain for the series coming up with the Giants. A payoff pitch coming from Lariano. Thurston steps out. Mauer has a little chat with his hurler. Big run to pick up here, Jay. Certainly would be. The walk. And 
That is the second pass issued by Lariano today. Well, we mentioned that the infielders would have a chance to redeem themselves in the fifth inning after their errors helped Minnesota build the lead. Same situation. Another chance at redemption here in the seventh inning. Kyler Green's bounced out twice. He's made an error along with Schumacher and Khalil Green. He's 0 for 8 in this series. Mm. About a base hit to right. I'd like to see him take the ball the other way. Now Okendo coming down the line to talk with Green. Not sure what that conversation would be about unless he's sees something in the approach of Khalil Green or of uh, Tyler Green at the plate. Certainly no signs on here. Did he go? Yes. Wouldn't be surprised if he told him to stay back and try to hit it the other way like we mentioned Jay because he's he was way out in front of that first pitch way out in front of that pitch. Liriano is just taking a little bit more off of each pitch and the ball dying at the plate and Cardinal hitters are swinging over top of it swinging too early. Best way to handle that is take the ball the other way choke up take it the other way. Shortstop Harris way out on the grass shaded towards second. That's it. Strikeout. That uh, was not a very good at bat for Mr. Green. Five to two, Minnesota. Action insights into the game news channel 5 your home for St. Louis Cardinals baseball. The new pitcher is Blake Hawksworth. And Joe Thurston stays in the game and plays at third base. Well, Hawksworth is one of the few Cardinal relievers we did not see in the game yesterday. He's really classified as the long reliever. He's been a starter throughout his career. In the minor leagues and he was a guy Jay that was a can't miss prospect that never quite put it together had some injuries. But he's getting his chance here, his rookie season in the big leagues. This is his sixth game. And he showed some signs of some good things, but wouldn't say that he's dominated by any stretch of the imagination. But he's got a good little sinker. That's really his best pitch. He doesn't throw overly hard, but key for him is to keep the ball down, like most pitchers. Pitch to Maurer, who was at the plate when Span was picked off in the seventh inning. Now are singled and scored in the first singled in the third and grounded into a double play in the fifth. That's in for a strike. 
Another final from Florida Tampa Bay playing at home defeats the Marlins five to two. Out to Schumacher. One away. Announcer apparel provided by the great folks at Ad Creations. I wore the wrong shirt again today. <laughs> <laughs> but we still match. We oh, both yeah, wear right. red. Yeah. You mentioned the uh, Tampa Bay score. It's another year of American League domination in interleague play. Mm -hmm. Since 2004, the American League has won every year. Actually, of the first seven years of interleague play, Jay, the National League held a four to three advantage through 2003. But since 2004, the National League has gotten pummeled. Here's Morneau with a shot into left and a great catch out there by DeRosa. Wow, what a play. My goodness, he took a double away from him. They're standing and applauding that one. Woo. He had to reach out as far as he could go, and he tumbles, holds on to the ball. Good hands here. That's the hands of an infielder right there. Coming right into your living room. Mark DeRosa makes the Cardinal fans happy here this afternoon. It was Morneau who had the three-run home run it's in a, the first inning. That's a pretty good play on three hours sleep. Boy, I'm going to tell you How about that play. Two balls and no strikes. Now we mentioned that DeRosa didn't get much sleep, but how about Rip Rowan who had to find out late last night that the new Cardinal was coming into town. Somebody had to make a uniform for him. Yeah, he, he got the seamstress up late, I'm sure. I'm sure he was the <laughs> seamstress. <laughs> Two balls and no strikes. Rip does a great job in that yes. Cardinal clubhouse along with the rest of his crew. A lot of late hours, a lot of early hours for those guys. Here's one into left center, and this is going to fall and uh, go all the way to the track, and it's a stand up double. Well, let's take a look at Justin Morneau as Amarin UE presents Power On. And the power was on in the first inning. Morneau, a three run home run, his 17th of the season. And he crushed that one, Jay, 430 feet plus. And the Twins have not looked back. Twins leading 5 to 2. We're in the eighth inning. Gomez is pinch running for Kubel. Kadire has grounded out twice and fly to center field. It's outside one ball and one strike. Blake Hawksworth on in relief. He follows Pinheiro and Miller to the hill. Strike on the corner, good pitch. Big run out there for Minnesota at this point in the proceedings. They lead already five to two. Cardinals will have the top of the order in the bottom of the eighth inning. And they can get some runs in a hurry. Schumacher on base. Albert Pop one. Could happen, Jay. I've seen it. Two and two. Fouled away. At Toronto, the Phillies win it five to four. Another 
final. Gomez out there at second. Shot into left. DeRosa is there. What a catch DeRosa made. Robbing Morneau. 5 2 Minnesota. Two point four nine ERA. Denard Span moves to left field and Gomez stays in the game. He pinch ran for Kubo. He'll play center field. So it is Span, Gomez, and Kadir in the outfield. Brendan Ryan comes out on deck. Schumacher leads off the bottom of the eighth. Very interesting that Ryan will hit as we thought his wrist was still not quite up to par. He was able to take some ground balls early, Jay. We saw him taking ground balls at second base, working with Jose Okendo very early today. He's been taking ground balls, but not swinging the bat. So surprised that we're seeing him in the on deck circle here. There is a right hander loosening for Minnesota. And that's probably who he'll face. That's Matt Guerrero in the bullpen for Minnesota. And Here's three a good balls start. and no strikes. Miharis taking over for Liriano. Went seven innings. Put up two runs on four hits. Gardenhauer not pleased with the First offerings of his reliever. Walked him on four pitches. I can't blame him. I wouldn't be happy either. And I think he's unhappy enough that he may have seen the last of this left hander. He's on the top step. You know you're in trouble when the manager's on the top step. He's from Caracas, Venezuela. Has not allowed a run in 13 of his last 16 appearances. Garden hires waiting to make sure that Ryan is announced before he goes out to take out his pitcher. He wants to make sure Ryan was announced. Guerrero will be the new pitcher. Ryan the hitter. And we'll be back with more right after these messages.
2.91 ERA. And Ryan has been called back, and Kobe Rasmus will be the batter. Guerrero pitched a scoreless inning in game one of this series on Friday night, and he will face Kobe Rasmus, who is pinch hitting for the pinch hitter. Wonder if Tony La Russa was doing a little decoy there by sending Brian, Brendan Ryan to the plate. We didn't think he would be available today, and maybe he really wasn't. Kobe Rasmus, 263, has had his moments. Jay in his rookie year, he has not been what I would say consistent. Leads with all the National League rookies with seven home runs and 28 RBIs. But he's streaky. That's outside. There's Albert on deck. Well, we'll take a bloop and a blast here. Another one wide. Well, Garden Hire was not happy with the first four pitches of this inning, and I'm sure he's not too happy with the first two from Guerrero either. Kobe Rasmus needs to be very selective here. Make him throw a strike. If it's in your wheelhouse, go for it, but make it a very small zone. Middle in, and unless the pitch there is there, take it. Ooh. Caught the inside corner. That was close. Smart pitch to take there. That's a pitch that could end up being a double play if he had pulled the trigger there. Very deep outfield for Minnesota. A lot of room in front of the center fielder in particular, Gomez. A nice play by the pitcher to turn the double play. Boy, he came up with that nifty shot right back at him. Rasmus grounds into the double play. Uh, it's unfortunate. The ball hit pretty well by Colby back up the box, but the pitcher there to make the play. And now Albert's got to hit with the bases empty here in the eighth inning, and you're really hoping for more of this inning, Jay, because the ninth inning belongs to Joe Nathan. And he is one of the toughest closers in all of baseball and very impressive here on Friday night. So you really need to get to the twins in the seventh and the eighth inning and they stranded an opportunity in the seventh. And that double play hurts here in the eighth inning as well. Albert has grounded out in the first walked in the fourth and struck out in the sixth. Batting average at 326. It gets by down at third. Albert will have a double. McCready looks fooled by this ball. Hit hard by Albert. It just stays low. He's expecting a higher bounce. And that ball with so much top spin on it, on it, it just slid right underneath the glove of Joe Creedy. He's guarding the line and Albert's still able to hit the ball past him. Well, Mark DeRosa who is grounded out on three occasions and who made that brilliant catch in the last inning first, stands in. First Cardinal RBI. That would be very nice. That's low. Matt Guerrero, the pitcher. Third of the afternoon. Foul back. A good cut there. Those just tuning in, here was the defensive play we're talking about. Mm. Oh, what a play that was. The ball was really, really hit hard. We found out we've got an athlete. 
The 2 1 pitch. Foul back. Pretty good swing there by DeRosa. Such a key part of that Chicago Cub team last year and the year before. His numbers getting better. He's really come into his own really at the age of 32. He became a solid big league player at the age of 32 after being kind of a journeyman with Atlanta and Chicago. And now he's a top notch player. Cardinals lucky to have him. That's fouled away. I say lucky to have him. It's not luck. It's giving up a guy like Chris Perez. We haven't mentioned much about him and the opportunity that he has in front of him going to Cleveland. A, a team that should be better than they are, but they've got some good talent on that club. Yeah. A lot of injuries, but they really need a closer in Cleveland. And I think Chris Perez is going to get that opportunity over the next couple of years. Sure, he will. Tony said today it's tough to see Perez go, but it's just inside full count. Relievers that throw 95 do not grow on trees. Pujols out there at second. Minnesota leading five to two bottom of the eighth inning. Three and two the payoff pitch coming to Mark DeRosa. Walked it. The tying run will come to the plate. That's what you're hoping for. And how about in the form of a guy that's swinging the bat pretty well. A couple of hits in a row for Ryan Ludwig. He had a double in the fifth inning and scored and a base hit in the seventh. And there he is with runners in scoring position batting over 300 on the season. How about a big fly. Check swing foul. Or as they used to say in the Dominican when we played down the Dominican, they called home runs para calle, para calle. Which is for the street, if you if you translate it directly. Para calle must be hit one for the street. And every time somebody hit a home run, you hear somebody yell, para calle. <laughs> I'll yell, if he hits a home run, I'll yell it. How's that, Jim? That's fine. I'll be happy for it. All right. <laughs> Foul out of play. 0 and 2. Tigers beat the Astros 4 to 3. That's a final. White Sox leading the Cubs 5 0, 8th inning. San Francisco 6 0 over Milwaukee in the 8th inning at Milwaukee. Five to two here. Ludwig's average down at 232, 38 RBIs, 11 home runs. Hoping to get his third consecutive hit in this afternoon's game. Cardinals out hit nine to five. Fly ball into short center. That's the shortstop Harris going back to make the play. The Redbirds strand two after eight. Five to two Minnesota.
to you by Budweiser, who thanks you for being a designated driver. By U.S. Cellular. U.S. Cellular, believe in something better. And by Jack in the Box, where you can get anything on the menu, any time of day. Josh Kinney is the new hurler for the Redbirds as we take a look at downtown. This is his eighth appearance. Got the victory yesterday. A couple of other guys could have been given that victory, but Josh Kinney got some important outs in relief of Todd Wellemeyer, who had a rough outing again here yesterday. And Josh Kinney getting a second chance here after a bad start to the 2009 season, went down to AAA, got, got it back together again, and he's a guy that's got a great upside, I think. He's a different reliever than Perez and Mott. He doesn't have that 98 mile an hour fastball, but he has a sharp slider when things are going well. He can be very, very tough. Joe Creedy is one for three on the afternoon. That was a woeful performance by Wellemeyer yesterday, and uh, he's got to wonder what his future is as a starter right now. Well, Brad Thompson's been doing a good job. Cardinals really need Kyle Loesch, and the news has been good on Kyle Loesch. There's Wellemeyer in the right. Thompson on the left doesn't start guys from being buddies even though they're in slight competition with one another shot into left field Reedy's second hit on the afternoon but Kyle Loesch uh, may have a couple of rehab starts before he's ready so you've got to have a fifth starter in the meantime and right now it's both of them they're pinpointing his rehab start I believe on Thursday of next week if all goes well. Here's Matt Tolbert grounded out in the fourth. He flied to left in the second. He singled and scored in the seventh. Foul. This is what we mean by the fundamental baseball that Minnesota plays so well. They're trying to. Move this guy along and maybe pick up another run to make it six to two. There's the bunt. Sacrifice is good. The play going 2 3. Brian Busher will be the pinch hitter. And that's the third sacrifice bun of the game. The second one for the Twins. The first one led to their run in the seventh inning, which extended their lead to 5 to 2. And again, a very fundamentally sound team. You play this game right, you'll win more than you lose. Busher stands in, batting 205. Has a couple of home runs, nine RBIs. Second home run of the season. He banged out against Pittsburgh on June the 19th. His first at bat in this series. Jacksonville, Florida, lives now in Columbia, South Carolina. Fouled away. Josh Kinney really working that facial hair, isn't he? He's got a very full Fu Manchu. I don't know if he's trying to be uh, Al Roboski, but he's got uh, got a new look well, after going a, to the minor leagues. And he's a great outdoorsman, you know, he is. and a great hunter. And uh, well, he looks a little bit like a Civil War general to me. Yes, too. he does. Bushler's one of the guys that's got a degree. He graduated from the University of South Carolina. One of those 26. That's right. <laughs> two balls and two strikes. We found it interesting that again those teams that have the players that have more college degrees on their team 
they're all in last place. Oakland, Washington, and Baltimore, I believe, are the three teams that are the teams with the most college graduates and can't always win with brains, Jay. <laughs> They'll do it again at 2 2. Yankees and the Mets meet again tonight at City Field in New York. San Diego is at Texas this evening. We've said for three straight innings that that's a big run out there, but it is. The difference between a three run game and a four run game. The Cardinals had a two out double by Pujols and a walk to DeRosa. Then you've got Ludwig as the tying run. And that just has a different feel. A three run inning just seems a lot more simple to accomplish than that fourth run. So Kenny really has some work to do here to keep it at five to two. And the walk. The runners at first and second. And uh, Duncan coming out to speak with Kenny. Come back to the top of the order. Bernard Spann will be at the plate. And he has reached base three of the four times that he's come to the plate this afternoon in the first. An error allowed him to reach and he scored. He grounded out in the second, reached on an error in the fifth, and then singled in the seventh. Well, that conversation with Dave Duncan, I'm sure he saw something with Josh Kinney, who does not look sharp, didn't look sharp at all in that at bat, was really kind of throwing some lazy breaking balls that if it comes out of your hand wrong, it looks like it has a little lazy spin to it. It's not real sharp. And we'll see if he made a correction, and he better make a correction quickly here. With a couple runners on base. Down to first, Albert goes to second for one, and not in time at first. So we'll have runners at the corners with two out. I'll tell you, that would have been a tough double play. Two holes with a tough hop, good throw, a little bit low, but. Green decides to go ahead and throw it to first base with Kinney covering and for a pitcher you can't have a much harder play than that. You're running in one direction you have to stop find the base then stretch. Really athletic play by Josh Kinney and it's very easy to throw that ball away for an error and allow that runner to score. So big out for the Cardinals there and Brendan Harris the only one standing in the way of a zero here in the ninth. He's grounded out reached on an error in the third and scored. Reached on a fielder's choice in the fifth and picked up an RBI on a sacrifice fly to left in the seventh. And this is a shot to right that will score another run. And Span moves all the way to third. Harris with his second RBI of the afternoon, his 21st of the season. Six to two game, 11 hits now for Minnesota. That was a sinker that did not sink. It stayed up in the zone, about belt high. Harris takes it the other way. And another two out hit and RBI for Minnesota. And now it's that score we didn't want. Six to two, Albert playing behind the runner at first. And here is Joe Maurer. And he's asking, should I go or not? Hours batting average 396 at this point. Singled, scored in the first, singled in the third, grounded into a double play in the fifth, and grounded out in the eighth. Harris is asking permission from Jerry White to steal second. And he started to go and, so, and heard Albert's footsteps behind him. Now Jerry White's trying to talk to him. They're, they're not sure what he should do. They don't want to take the bat out of Mauer's hand either. No, you certainly don't want to do that, but the way the defense is set up, it's a long, long way to go for Green or Schumacher to get the second. That's fouled away. 0 and 2. Well, the old school way to do it is if the first baseman's playing behind and they're giving it to you, then you take it. And if you don't want the guy to run, then you play it honest and you hold him on. 
and that actually led to a fight a couple of times between the Cardinals and the San Francisco Giants with Roger Craig and Whitey Herzog kind of disagreeing about that philosophy but point is if you're going to take the advantage of playing behind which is what Pujols is doing now then you should have some consequences for that which is the runner taking second base I don't think that would be an improper thing to do and why not give Maurer a shot at two RBIs instead of one Roger Craig and Whitey Herzog have had some great confrontations over uh, the years didn't they? they were they were something Craig was a real hard nosed old style baseball man Pretty good with Boy. runners in scoring position. What do you think? I think? That's excellent. Hard to be much better than 472. There goes the runner, and the pitch is low. That is defensive indifference. No stolen base. One ball and two strikes. Part of the reason why Mauer is a better player. Got a game, got a guy named Morno on deck. That's just as good. So no thought here in walking Maurer, which makes him a better hitter. Inside. Josh Kinney still not quite right. Don't see that sink and that hard slider that we've seen before. He's close. Got him. A big strike out there. We're going to the bottom of the ninth inning. Minnesota six to two. He was the great player this afternoon. Lariano did a nice job. He did a nice job in his start, and he's in line for his fourth victory of the season. Lee Lariano went seven innings, gave up just uh, two runs, four hits. He had the Cardinals no hit through four innings, gave up three straight hits in the fifth. That was his only problem, and he deserves to be our player of the game. And now it's up to R.A. Dickey to close it out for Minnesota. Knuckleballer Jay in the ninth inning. I noticed that he is a uh, guy that's involved with the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, so I'm predisposed to like this guy. But but honestly, what kind of name is R.A.? I mean, I've I've heard of initials like J.T. and J.R. and but R.A. Robert Allen Dickey. I'll take your word for it. Yes, sir. I don't. Do you know any other R.A.s? No. I looked it up. It's Robert Allen. And he. Uh, Attended the University of Tennessee. And as you mentioned, uh, very active in the FCA. And Keel. 
after grounding out in the second doubled and scored and picked up an RBI in the fifth. Reached on a fielder's choice in the seventh. Stole his first base of the season. He's stranded. And a knuckleballer is the kind of guy that can screw up your swing for a week. That pitch right there at 74 miles an hour. Top of the strike zone for Ann Keel. Called a strike. That's way high. And that was just for effect. That's the fastball high. And now you're going to see the knuckleball come floating in about 74 miles an hour. You actually throw it with your fingertips, not right. with your knuckles. He's going to push the ball. And whoops. Hot shot out to the shortstop, Harris. High throw, but it's handled all right there by Morneau. One away. Dickey uh, has not allowed a run in 10 of his last 12 appearances. And now he faces Jason LaRue. One for three on the afternoon. And it is over the outstretched glove of Matt Tolbert. The one out single. LaRue was robbed back in the third inning when he flied deep to left. That's his second hit of the afternoon. He's and he almost four. And he almost had a hit in the seventh inning. Right. Nice play by Creedy. Could be four for four here this afternoon. He's done a nice job filling in for Yadier Molina. And the Cardinals need a couple of more base runners. Chris Duncan will hit for Tyler Green. He's in the on deck circle, and he'll be the last Cardinal other than Yadier Molina to get in this game. Thurston, in his first time at bat when he came in in the seventh, walked. I haven't seen many knuckleballing relievers, although this team's former. Home base, Washington, D.C. They had a lot of knuckleballers there back in the days. Mickey Hefner, a whole bunch of guys that they brought out of the Caribbean. <laughs> of course, Hoyt Wilhelm is the most famous of all knuckleballers. I don't know, Necro is pretty famous too. Charlie Huff. Charlie taught the knuckleballer to a number over the years and Charlie, of course, was the winning pitcher on opening day for the Florida Marlins. The last one I remember was a reliever for Milwaukee named Sparks. Wakefield, of course, still Wakefield. going at Boston. The walk. Right. Two walks for Thurston. Now it's getting interesting. Duncan will stand in. Duncan had a single and a walk yesterday. Cards are 26 and 6 in games when he homers, dating back to 2007. Ball one. Schumacher is on deck. One ball and one strike. Cardinals just need base runners here. And you know, Al Roboski loves to talk about on the Fox broadcast about how a home run in this situation is a rally killer. And I totally understand what he's talking about. You don't, you almost don't want the bases to be cleared here. You want just base runners, pressure, pressure. You don't necessarily need to hit a home run because that's not enough for you. Eventually you'll want one, but when you're down by four, you just want to keep the pressure on the other team, walk, base hit, error, something like that to keep the pressure on that reliever. It gets up the middle. And they hold up, look out. Oh, we got a problem here. My goodness, Thurston is out. 
I thought that Okendo was going to send LaRue. There seemed to be some miscommunication as far as Thurston went around second. And Thurston is out. Yeah, that's really an inexcusable mm -hmm. base running mm -hmm. error. I mean, there is no no excuse for that happening whatsoever. Joe Thurston's got to look ahead of him, not behind him, because but ahead of him is a guy stopped at third and he's just out at second base. His run means nothing. It's the ninth inning of the game, and that's just I mean, there's no way to sugarcoat it. That's just horrible base running. And Joe Thurston's been a great guy to have on his Cardinal team, but his base running right there. Not very good. And they're bringing Nathan into the game. We'll be back with more right after this. Paths. Jose Okendo is holding up LaRue and Joe Thurston rounds second base and he is picked off on the throw from center field as he thought LaRue was going to be scoring. And, you know, even so, whether or not he goes to third base, it's just inconsequential. It doesn't matter. The, the run you need is on deck. And Joe Nathan now in to close it out for Minnesota. 18 saves on the season. He's one of the best. He'll face Skip Schumacher. And now the Cardinals do not have the tying run at the plate. Jay, and the worst part is you got this thrill of the base hit, hit by Chris Duncan, and you don't even have time to enjoy it. No, you don't. It's a base hit, and then all of a sudden it's a second out, and, and now you've got to face their closer. Very disappointing. And Nathan was very sharp here on Friday evening. He's now converted 13 consecutive save opportunities. Schumacher is struck out, fly to center, grounded out, and walked. Runners at the corners, two outs. Yadier Molina will hit next for Khalil Green if Schumacher can keep this going. Foul ball. Nathan trying to pick a one out, pick up a one out save. Cardinal fans, to their credit, still in this game. Urging on Skip Schumacher. Inside. Nathan is a resident of Knoxville, Tennessee. Went to high school in New York State, where he was a great star. Graduate of Sunnybrook with a degree in business management, two time All American. 
and an academic All-American. Originally born in Houston, Texas. 6 4 and 225. Runner going, strike out, and that will do it. Nathan picks up where he left off on Friday night. A tough loss, 6 to 2. Minnesota wins it and takes this series 2 out of 3. Cardinals had their chances the last three innings, couldn't come up with the Big hit base running mistake in the ninth inning and they gave up 